It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Robert Geislinger. So here we're taking a look at The Roar. Now this is a game where players will be transporting coal to various cities and industries, and even to the port itself that can be then exported overseas. The game itself is played over 12 rounds, with each round being divided into seven distinct phases. The first phase, and the easiest way to teach you how this game plays is to just go through the phases, is simply to do a conduct a historical event, because this game is based on the history of the coal in trade in this era. In the first round, that's simply going to be that each player is going to receive one Thaler. As you move through the game, it's going to change certain aspects of the game, and we'll cover a little bit of that here in a minute. The next phase is to draw an obstacle or a demand tile, and that's going to come from this bag. And by default, there are a certain number in here, and we're going to pull it out and find out what happens. Now, most of these are going to increase the demand in cities for coal, such as this one here, which means that this city here of Blankenstein is going to get one Thaler. So anyone delivering coal there would receive an additional money when they do so. This is then discarded from the game completely. Now there are another type in here that involve the water levels and they can cause the water to go up or down, they can cause some of the coal potentially values to change, but most importantly whenever those waters change they're going to make anything that has this pilot action that we'll cover in a minute be unavailable for the entirety of that round. Now over the course of the game more tiles will get added to this bag as players build locks, but we'll get to that. The next thing that's going to happen is each player is going to choose their action, if they wish to take one, and place their barge. Now at the beginning of the game, each player's barge is nowhere, and they can put it anywhere along the first half of this board that they wish. But later, it's going to follow a set of rules. And to understand that, it's best if I explain these actions right here. These actions are ones that players can choose to take, and the first row here here costs nothing, then it's one Thaler, two Thalers, and then these are special actions that would be unlocked later. This one allows a player to bring a coal die from this track here out onto a space in the area. This one allows them to hire a pilot, basically, that would allow them to move further down the river than otherwise stated. Because on a turn, you're only able to, by default, move your coal that you're delivering up to two spaces. This will allow you to go any number that you wish. Then we have the horse here, the hauling action. And this is important because you're going to be moving down the river. You don't have the ability to move your ship up the river by yourself, so you need to be carried that way. Taking, paying for this action allows you to place anywhere up the river, and in fact it's the only way to get out of Port Ruart itself. This one is a combination of the first two that we covered. This one here, which now costs two Thalers, is a combination of these two, and this one is a combination of these two. In addition, as I said, there are two here that are unlocked when you get these achievements, and this one just allows you to get two coins, and this one allows you to increase the value of a die by two. Any of these can be taken by any number of players. This one can only be taken by one player per round. So for an example here, let's say, I'm going to say that my guy was already out and maybe in the previous round he had went here. Now he could decide to go to this coal and he could just do that. That's down the river. Or he could decide he wishes to go up the river maybe to this one, in which case he would need to take this 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 hauling action here, which allow him to move back up the river to here or to here. But let's say he also wanted to deliver this die to this city. Well, that's more than two away. So he's also going to need the pilot action. So we could take this horse and pilot, which allowed us to move back up the river and then go all the way down to here. Now these obstacles are important, but I'll explain that during the next phase of the game. 
After each player has done this, and it's done in player order, and one thing to always keep in mind throughout this game is player order is always determined by who is further up the river. So if blue was here and red was here, then blue is currently first player. If that changes at any point, the player order will change. To deliver the coal, you're going to move it to wherever you intended. Hopefully you paid for what you were going to do because there are certain things that can't even be delivered to. If they have this black arrow, that means there's no way to deliver to them without pay taking the pilot action. The same way with these coal here that has the black arrow and the little icon, you can't deliver coal that's here without that. But in the case of this, the blue one decides he's delivering here. So he delivers to here, to this industry. Now that's gonna do a few things. First, this die is gonna generate him three thalers, but he had to cross over an obstacle. If you have to cross over any of these lock obstacles, you reduce the value by one. It doesn't matter how many you go over, you just reduce it by one. So it's gonna reduce it down, and then it's gonna go to this coal track. Now I'm gonna explain the coal track a little better later but for right now just know it goes in here and if this is full it pushes coal down since he got two thalers that's what he's going to get but wait there is a tech tree in this game and on here we have delivering black dice or coal to industries that means that he's going to earn a cube for it but he has to pay for it and it's not optional if you can place a cube you must so he has to place a cube in here and that's going to be important a little later but that's going to reduce him as well to only receiving one thaler so he earns one income for the sake of argument here we're going to say that red had taken the pilot action and decided they were going to deliver all the way down to the city the same thing here. Now they cross three obstacles, but that actually only reduces it by one. So it would go here as a two. They earn two coins, but they need to place in here. So they would place a, a cube here and they would only gain one failure because they had to spend one. Once each player at the table has moved in their call, transported, delivered it, then we're gonna move into stage five, which is the claiming progress markers. Think of this as like achievements. That is how you're going to unlock additional things on your board but it's going to be based on what you've done in this tech tree such as here in order for us to be able to build warehouses in the Essen region we need to have two in this spot one in this spot and one in here and it's claimed in player order so whoever is further up the river in this case blue blue gets to claim anything they have access to now these here any player can do because each person has their own in the same way with these. These down here and these are special and there's only going to be one less than the number of players in the game. Then we're going to move into round six which is where we're going to get to buy things such as warehouses and things like that. Now you do need to have unlocked the ability such as here this Essen warehouse means that we can build in these cities. You can build one per city per player and the cost is going to be printed with the first player spending three then four four and then five. You also will be able to build here in Port Ruar, which we'll explain why is important in a little bit. But when you place it here, you're going to place in whichever column you wish in the, in the highest available column. You also can build locks starting in round two. And by default in round two, it's going to cost you two. You have to have unlocked it, and then later it's going to go up to three. Building a lock simply means paying and then removing one of these obstacles from the board and placing it into the bag, further seating it. If you do it in this side, you're going to gain two victory points and on this side you're going to gain three. After this we're going to move into phase seven which is where we're going to export. Now in the first three rounds this isn't applicable but as we move later certain countries are going to have demands for coal. So what's going to happen is we're going to look in here and see who has warehouses in that column and they're going to take this number and this number and they're going to add it and they're going to get that number of victory points. One other thing I didn't mention and I guess I should have in round six you can also pay to pay two coins to slide over one of your houses to move it into another column in the top available slot. For each player that gets victory points for this, this track will go down by one. Now this track goes up anytime coal is delivered to 
Port Ruard itself. Now before I get into what happens at the end, I'm going to explain just a few more things that you should be aware of in this game. First off is these dice themselves. They do not change values other than based on the game. They are never rolled. In addition, as I said, as they come in here, they will slide down. If they come off, they will move back into a region based on the track up here. Over the course of the game, historically, the length to the, the method of getting cold delivered was more efficient. So what happens is the tracks get smaller. So here in round four, all of these dice slide over and from now on they're placed into this road, eventually moving to railroads. These warehouses that you see on the board are unlocked via certain things. This one here is unlocked when you unlock the ability to build locks. This one over here, when you get the ability to build out here, and that's something I should have mentioned. At the beginning of the game, you only have access to this half of the board. Once you unlock this achievement, you now have access to this entire region as well. In addition, you will then get these warehouses. The ones up here on the board will actually just come to you by default when you reach that round. A couple other things that you can do is you can take a loan. If at any point you need money, you can take Take one of your available warehouses that you haven't put out on the board and you can leverage it to get two thalers. You do need to spend three thalers at some point during a phase six in order to get it back or at the end of the game it will cost you two victory points. And at the end of any round you can only have a max of ten thalers. End game scoring. Once you get to the end of the final round you are going to go through some end game scoring. Now there is some scoring that happened during the game as well. The I didn't cover one piece. I did discuss the locks, but anytime you build warehouses out here, whether it be in a city or in these coal locations, you do get two victory points for those. And we already talked about the ones here. But at the end of the game, you're going to get some additional points. First off, if you have a warehouse in each of these three cities, you'll get a point. In each of these three cities, another point. If you have one in all seven cities, you're going to get an additional three points. A special note is this city here of Mulheim, you can only only build in by getting this achievement of warehouse. In addition, each player is, you're going to look at these coal areas and whoever has the majority warehouses in them will get a victory point. These are an exception to that rule where I said you could only build one. Here you can build as many as you wish. Here you can build up to two. But you're going to get whoever has the most. Now ties, no one gets any points. Then if you have one in each of these, you're going to get an additional two points. You're going to lose points, as I said, for any loans that are outstanding. And then there are some special achievements that you will get extra victory points for. If you have the in you can, and have it used it, because these are once per game, you can get two victory points out of that. The barge here, these will allow you to basically build your own little bonuses at the end of the game. The barge will mean as long as you have it, you're going to get two by default, but if your barge ends up here in Ruart, then you get four points. Mayor is for each coin you have left, you'll get a point, and the railway is for each warehouse that you have out, you'll gain an additional victory point. You'll add them all up, and whoever has the most points is the winner. So let's a look at The Roar. Now this is a reprint update of an older title called Ruchafart that I had not had a chance to play previously, so I can't compare it to the older version. One thing I will say is when you're first punching this game, it's very overwhelming because there's actually two games in the box. The game does include the standalone expansion, The Ohio, and as such you flip the board over and that has a completely different set of tokens and a completely different rule book for it, but it is built on the same game engine. Now I really did enjoy this game. For a medium game, it, it sits well on the table. It looks nice. It's uh, Artwork wise, it's about what I would expect for a medium euro. There's nothing spectacular, but everything is really functionally laid out. However, it can get a little bit icon heavy. So the first time you're going to be going into the rule book and maybe even the second time looking and seeing what those lock tiles do and things like that. But I will say that the rule book for this game is really well laid out. And I know that was a complaint with the older version of the game is that people really struggled with that rule book. And I've had a chance to glance at the older rule book and I agree this is a much better version of the rule set. I really enjoyed the decisions you have to make. 
like when you first lay out the game, you know you have 12 rounds, and that actually doesn't seem like enough to do what you want to do, and maybe it isn't, but you start to feel like those rounds get longer and longer and you really start to make more meaningful decisions, especially once you're able to start buying locks and building warehouses. But beyond that, there's a lot of decisions you have to make that are going to impact the decisions you will make on the next turn. And I really enjoyed how I had to continuously think forward in knowing that, am I going to need that horse next round? Especially if you want to take advantage of the port strategy, you really do need to know that you're going to be buying a horse to get back out onto the river. And I like the way that mechanism works in this game. If I have a complaint about the game, and I noticed this the second time I played it, because the second time I played it, I played it as a two-player game, is I don't think this game was designed with two players in mind. The game does try to scale itself with less coal out on the board, but there's a lot of things that just don't work as well as they should in a two-player game versus a three and four. Things like the, the Port Ruhr art, where you just don't get a lot of competition going on down there, and the warehouses don't really ratchet up, and the coal depots themselves. You've got this majority game that you're playing that really in a two-player game just doesn't happen. So I really think that the game was meant for three and four players. I'm not saying that I wouldn't play the game a two-player again, because I still found it enjoyable experience experience, I just found it to be a different experience. As to the theme of the game, I didn't really know what to expect. I'm not an expert on coal trading back in the 17, 1800s, but I actually really enjoyed this. And it's more so because the game does a good job of explaining to you the historical reasons, especially let's say that first time you play the game where you're gonna to need to look up what happens in each of the rounds. The game gives you a historical reason why that was happening, why the roads improved, why the trains made coal deliver faster, why eventually it actually became harder to move down the river and why eventually the coal trade declined and you get that sense of history throughout the game that often you don't get in Euro games a lot of times, so that really worked here. Overall, if you're looking for a medium Euro with a different theme than trading spices or building castles, this is can, you could do a lot worse than the Roar. I definitely recommend, re recommend this game for fans of medium Euros and people who might be interested in the theme, but I do do so with a word of caution that if you're looking to get this game to play it solely to players, you might want to look elsewhere in this. Now, I haven't personally played the expansion in the box, the Ohio, but I've looked through its rules and I see that it plays very similarly, so I expect that my opinion of it will probably be about the same. I hope this has given you a good idea of how the Roar plays and whether or not it might be a good game for you and those you play games with, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.